So we just had a uh, guest on, Patrick McGinnis. Um, he's a quarter Irish. Yes, loved. Uh, loved. I'm only stating that because I said I asked about the but last McGinnis. name. So yeah. I guess he only owns a quarter of his last name. Yeah, it was, it was really interesting. He have a, a Harvard Business Review podcast. Um, so we encourage you guys to listen to it. Um, but the book, you know, um, that, that he wrote, The Fear of Missing Out, the FOMO. Yeah. And then his uh, view, uh, and I, this is what I want to get into um, in this after show, is um, the fear of missing out. And then when we, you had some pretty um, hard-hitting questions, which was great, <clears throat> but that how it lines up with Tartle's values. And then what we're trying to do, especially with, you know, this free marketplace and data. One of the biggest things that stuck out, I guess, in, in, in my sense after talking to Patrick was that it's not, we shouldn't do things just to coerce people. Mm, yes. Because it's not beneficial to their evolution or even the stability of their mental state. They should be educated and then championed for making a choice for themselves. That's what needs to be reinforced. Yeah, and he mentioned that. He said it's not society's problem necessarily. It's, it's education and then taking 100% responsibility. It's a hundred percent responsibility and it's beholden of us. But the thing is you have to educate people on something they may not be aware of. Mm, yes. So he's not using FOMO as a tool to continue to say, Oh, let's, you know, double down on FOMO for a financial benefit. Yeah. It's not, it's not like FOMO. Uh, here's, here, here's a marketing plan of how you can use fear. Mm -mm. He looked at phone and he says, okay, now that we have articulated and identified this thing that is occurring. Mm. Okay. And it's quite pervasive. How do we integrate that understanding and then start to make these self-sovereign choices, choices over our emotions, our time, and how we choose to view our reality rather than distort it? And I think that's something that was quite incredible that all of these research papers have come out on FOMO and how to measure it, especially from a you know psychosomatic stances or psychologically diseased states, whatever it might be, and how that affects people's decision making in real life and actually affecting you know biological outcomes on their health that's where something that seemed qualitative became identified turned into a data point we were allowed to measure it mm -hmm. and then through this measurement and through this awareness we could educate and then act upon that information well i i you know th this was something i was thinking about and i want to get into this because um, I, I think it's really interesting. He, he talks, especially in the book, the role of perception. And then he used an example of somebody sitting at home not feeling very good. Yep. Because And then they go on Snapchat or whatever, and they look at the stories, and they see friends of theirs at a party yeah. having tons of fun. So then they get depressed and jealous. That's why I send you pictures of all these fun <laughs> things I'm doing. I'm like, let's get them jealous. I'm like, uh, I don't want to do any yeah. of that. <laughs> Actually, I don't want to do any of those things you're doing. But, but, but I mean, Good for you. <laughs> yeah, but when, but when you look at it, um, this, because it, it social media is pointing here, here's what I want to, here's what I want to understand. Social media is just giving you, cause th those people would go to the party anyways. You just would not know anything about it. Yes. So the problem lies within you because that, that, that emotion of jealousy and depression yeah. from you actually seeing them. The, the perception of them having fun. You don't know if they got drunk and had a fight with their boyfriend or girlfriend or partner or whatever. You have no, you idea. Have no idea. And they posted that before they broke up. You know, I mean, there's lots of things that go on that you have. You have that perception of reality is a false sense. But to attach this emotion to it, that's what I thought was really, really interesting when he was talking about you this fear. First, you distort a reality yes. that you don't have an objective view on. Right. And then you apply an emotion to it and have that as a key driver for your psychological state? Dude. Self-awareness. I think social media could point that out, that we need more of that. Right. But it's not, it's not designed to do that. Right. And we spoke about this with technology and human evolution. Mm -hmm. That technology is just evolving, 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 and it's ex exacerbating issues and keeping us as lab rats rather than helping us evolve as human beings. Right. There's no balance. It lacks that balance. And so if social media in its own nature is not designed for that, it never will be. Mm. Somebody would have to create something new that disincentivizes that sort of algorithm, that disincentivizes that sort of approach. 
Just have a thing that just automatically logs you out and you can't log back in. You get 15 minutes. Call it a day. Yeah, that Bye. makes sense. Yeah. See you later. So, like, when you look at this fear of missing out. Or there's a picture and the requirement <laughs> is, tell me what happened 15 minutes beforehand. You have to type it out. Yeah. And tell me what happened 15 minutes after the picture. <laughs> yes, exactly. Now we have a little bit more of a narrative. Yeah, because, you know, not only the role of perception, but then he talks about the role of inclusion, um, you know, in the book. And, and so. Well, we had um, women of color in tech. Right. Talk about inclusion. Inclusion is something we suck at as human beings. The fact that it's such a pervasive issue that we can't be inclusive of other human beings and the things that we're doing. And then the other fact is, why am I not including myself? There's two aspects of it. It's one is people are don't want to be inclusive, mm, right? right? And the other one is, it's a choice of just not wanting to do it out of your own, you have your own free will outside of the herd itself. And, and these are things that self-aware is. So I'm going to use alcohol for an instance. And I was listening to a podcast yesterday about this and it was, and he uh, it was Chris Williamson. I think um, I'm going to invite him onto the show. He has an amazing podcast um, called modern wisdom, mm -hmm. but he was talking about alcohol in the sense of, if you look at it in a performative way, like as far as performance goes, he goes, if 90%, um, he's English, he was saying blokes, if 90% yeah. of the blokes are out there Friday night, Saturday night, they're doing that in their 20s, they're doing that in their 30s, they're doing that in their 40s. And we see that here a lot in Albuquerque. There's a lot of alcohol yeah. uh, abuse here in, in Albuquerque. But people just party on the weekends and they just continue to do that. They buy houses, buy new cars. It's a rum and, springer. And then they have friends come over and they're just <laughs> drinking constantly, which yeah. there's nothing wrong with drinking. But what he was saying is, now I got Monday and Tuesday to recover. He goes, if if I make a decision. I've lost 20% of my week. Yeah, he goes, if if I make a percentage, I'm probably in the top 10% of being able to be productive. By not drinking on the weekends. Yeah, by not drinking on the weekends or just doing it occasionally. Yeah. So he went 1,000 days uh, sober, and he leads some of the top clubs in um, the UK. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, this guy is like, he, he's a party boy. You know, he says that. But um, he's like, to go to a club and not drink alcohol it's such a, a a stark reality to see what's going on. And, and and this is what I want to get into in this, because whenever you begin to say, I'm going to take 100% self-responsibility for who I am as an individual, mm -hmm. and I'm not going to look to social media to make me who they think that I should be or how I can please my friends, but I can turn around and say, what am I passionate about? What are the things that I want to do? And Friday night, I may not want to go to a party. I may want to paint. Mm. You know, or, or, or Saturday night, I may not want to um, go to the club. I may actually want to read a book. Well, now you're making a choice. I don't want to include myself in that. Yes. I want to self-exclude yes. for my benefit, for my own evolution, for my own mental state. You know, I uh, just in a personal sense about me, I love going to clubs. I love mm -hmm. raves. But right, I EDM, don't, I do too, yeah. I don't like to go there and do drugs. Right. I don't like to go there and drink. Actually, I'm strictly there to feel the music and the energy of the crowd, nothing else. Right. But if you look at all these other things, it's the drinking, it's the drugs, it's all this, and it's all this other stuff that gets packed in to create this sort of well, cultural our, but idea. Here's, here, no, no, this is really, really good, what no, you tell, just said. Yeah, go ahead. It's not the club, the music. It's not the social media. It's you deciding to drink every weekend to escape the reality yeah because that's your free time if you work monday through friday or whatever so you've decided to say i work you know maybe you like your job maybe you don't and then on the weekends i've decided to put myself into obliteration so i don't have to think and i don't have to be me as an individual i can just go out live on a whim not be self-aware at all and just do what I need to do. Same thing with social media. If I just go on Instagram and just scroll, 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 click, click. Oh, I like that boat or I like that house. Um, I should get like a house like that. Or this influencer, I, I really <laughs> love him or her in the way that they look. I wish I could look like that. Do you see? It's the same. It doesn't matter if it's social media. There's no difference. Or if it's, if it's going to a club. It, it's that perception of you having a responsibility and have the ability to be self-aware enough to say the decisions that I make are for the betterment of me yeah, and me only. And that's being self, you may say that's being selfish, but it's not because it's making you a better version to be able to serve others. That's precisely correct. And so much money, so much time and resources put into this data for coercion. Mm, yes. 
to distort reality and to drive you away from who you really are. I'll give it for instance. This guy left a comment on an article, and I shared this with our team this morning. And it was about uh, Signal, the not-for-profit messaging platform, getting kicked off of Instagram for some of their ads. He, this gentleman comments in the bottom of the article, I don't bother with anti-tracking and ad block and whatnot, but Google still gives me shit ads anyway. <laughs> Right now, I'm looking at a boat ad, and I have no interest whatsoever in boats, which reflects in the complete absence of boat websites visited by me. I also had ads for women's lingerie and makeup pop-up and cross-dressing. is likewise not of my interest. Winky face. <laughs> I thought big data was supposed to be uh, what they're good at. Shrug. This is just reinforcing the point mm -hmm. that they want you to live in their idea of reality, but not something that is truly for you, that is of your interest. Time, resources, algorithm, data reinforce the self-fulfilling prophecy of this FOMO. Oh, you don't own that object? Go get it. Let's distort what Carl, not Carl Jung, who is the other guy, um, deals with this. All about the sexual stuff. He was oh, yeah, about. yeah. Uh, uh, Freud, Freud. Freud. Yeah, yeah, Freudian. It's like you get the Freudian marketing, and then that gets just baked into the rest of the stuff going on in the 50s. We're monkeys, and, and in our monkeys, we have sexual desires. And, and if we can say FOMO, the yeah. fear of missing out, like you're, you need this cool car. Oh, you got the So big, you can get the chicks. You got the big bunch of bananas. Yeah, exactly. You got yeah. the bigger stick to pull the ants out. I got to go get one of those. Right. It's a lifestyle thing, right? And so we're forced these ideas, these lifestyles that really aren't good for us. Mm. You know, this, you know, FOMO is just an expansion upon what has been so pervasive. And the fact that since 2003, it's been able to identify itself and become something that can be quantitatively measured to help people realize a benchmark to help guide a level of self-awareness that they otherwise didn't have. Yeah, and I, I just shout out to, uh, to Patrick and uh, getting all this data together and um, making this uh, amazing book um, because the book in and of itself is a, is, is a wake-up call and, and it's a call to self-awareness yeah. and 100% responsibility as the individual. He's not championing FOMO. This is to champion self-awareness. Yes. To champion self-choice. To champion being objective. To champion having sovereignty over what you're doing in the way you think. Yeah, and it, there was one word, and I don't mean to use it. It's a buzzword nowadays. It's an old buzzword. But one of the things I felt with him, and you even ask him pretty hard-hitting question on investing, but one of the things that I felt with him is he's very transparent. Yes. Yeah, and, and, and you can, when you see that with somebody, how to, if they're extremely transparent, um, that those masks are those, you know, because I always look at people have masks, you know, they wear yeah. a different mask. You know, Venice, everybody wears yeah. the mask. You can tell like the mask is off with him and he's just trying to be, he even said, I'm trying to be, I'm just a step ahead. He, the wounded healer. He's the wounded healer. He is honest with himself. Mm, yes. Which allows him to be honest with others. But if all of us are going around and we're being fed by the same data algorithms that cause us to think in a dishonest light and about what we think is really good for us, that's going to really hinder our evolution.